Welcome into the Bruce Arians Show. Casey Phillips here with head coach Bruce Arians. So second biggest comeback in franchise history and the second time you've done that this season. I think I have figured it out. I think you're really just a drama queen at heart. You like a little flair. Winning games normally has just become too boring for you. Have I have I figured it out? You got it perfectly. I mean, without any drama, they'll, you know, they'll turn the TV off. Exactly. You're, I mean, I'm sure all of the broadcasters are so thankful that, that you're on board like that. Um, so, so tell me, what is a game like that do emotionally for you throughout of it? I mean, you've, you've, you've been through a lot of football games, but what is going through your mind and what are the emotions on a game like that? You know, when's it going to turn around? And, uh, you know, we, when you start a ball game, you know, the first two plays were great and we give up an easy third down, we miss a tackle and then they go right down and score. We run a screenplay and lose, I don't know, 12 yards on a completed screen pass and, uh, and punt and they go down and score again. So it's just like, I know it's going to turn around. Just when's it going to turn around? I'm sure it did take a little longer to turn around than you would have liked. Um, what, I mean, I feel like I've asked this a few times already this year, but what changed first to second half? I mean, I don't know what you're doing in there at halftime, but whatever that motivational speech is or whatever you're saying, I feel like a lot of us in 2020 could use it. Yeah. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, we played 30 minutes. We got our tail kicked pretty good. We're gonna play 30 minutes. We gotta we gotta kick their tail more than they kicked ours. And uh, we we went back out and offensively, we did that in the second half. The only thing I was really disappointed is when we scored that touchdown to start the second half and we gave up a touchdown. I, I thought our defense was gonna come out and and do a better job. Played like they did in the fourth quarter and the third quarter. And uh, but offensively, we just kept going, scoring, scoring, and uh, and got ourselves a, a win. Yeah, I mean, the 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 storyline has been the slow start for several games now. I know you guys have been outscored 59 to 7 in the last six first quarters. So I know it's something you've been preaching. Is there anything now that you feel like that you can point to new or anything different that what is it that's going to finally get you guys to 60 full minutes? You know, that's that's the, the million dollar question, multi-million dollar question, uh, you know, talking to the guys after the game, you know, why don't we play 60 minutes like we played that last 30? Because it's totally different. And, uh, you know, we, we do a great job on the practice field. We're preparing for ball games. We just don't start them very well, um, whether it be offense or defense. And uh, But so, you know, so far uh, we've been able to come back most of the time. Uh, we just got to quit digging that hole. It's, it's going to catch up to us sooner or later. Yeah, and specifically offensively, you guys only had 60 yards of offense in the first half, but then the third quarter alone, you had drives of 80, 76, 75. What was the biggest shift offensively to be able to get that kind of production so quickly in the third quarter? I think the pass protection was outstanding, and uh, you know, we ran it just enough to use the play action. Uh, Tom caught fire, and uh, the guys were getting open, and we were hitting everything. And uh, we didn't hit everything, but we made enough first downs uh, to, to move the chains and uh, and on third the few third downs we had we converted and then how about on the the big plays the chunk plays especially that you guys didn't have any longer than 14 yards in the first half and then you had seven of them in the third quarter alone what was it on some of the the chunk plays that were working well well again protection when tom has time uh he'll decipher and guys are getting open um, but again we, we took uh, more of an attack mode I think in the third quarter because of where we were uh, still utilizing the run enough, uh, but going downfield more. And how about this was your, your first game having to deal more with uh, the COVID situation for this year and um, the specialists. I mean, thankfully they were all able to be cleared to play, but what was that like last week when there was a time when you didn't know if you'd have any of those guys, one of them, two of them, three of them, what, what did that do for the preparation there? We were prepared for not having any of them. You know, we brought guys in off the street and there's no worse feeling as a coach than to go out there and say, what's that guy's name? Uh, that just made a field goal or, or, or punted or made a play. And uh, we would have been in that situation. And, uh, you know, I, I would have probably figured them out by the time we got to the game. But, it, you know, thankfully we got them all back and uh, we only lost Donovan and Rojo. Yeah, and speaking of that, when uh, when you found out that you were going to be without those two guys, what were some of your first thoughts? And, and again, what was the strategy that came out of that as you started to prepare guys? Well, with Rojo, it was, it was whether or not he was going to be able to play with a pin in his finger. Then the COVID hit, and so we knew he was out. So Leonard just jumped right back into that role and did a great job. I thought he played really, really well in the game. Donovan was a late week thing that we really didn't think he would be held out. Uh, the league decided to hold him out. Josh Wells went in and Josh played exactly. I thought I knew he, I knew he would play well. He played really well.
Yeah, and with Fournette, 14 carries for 49 yards, but um, also three catches for 16 and two touchdowns, uh, second multiple touchdown game for him. What were some of the individual things that impressed you? You said you liked his performance overall. What were some of the things you felt like he did particularly well? I think the big thing was pass blocking. He was he's picking up blitzers because the Falcons were blitzing a lot in this ball game. He did a great job in pass protection. Um, hit the holes, ran the clock out for us. Obviously did a great job on the goal line, getting the ball in both times, but uh, just overall really solid ball game. Yeah, and how about LaShawn McCoy? Three catches, 32 yards. We saw him start to get more uh, production last week as well. And then, you know, because of Rojo again being out, we knew he'd be a, a bigger part again this week. What what has he shown you in, in the way that he's sort of carved out a role for himself in this offense? Dependability. Dependability. Again, blitz pickup was outstanding. When he got his opportunities with his hands on the ball, he, he made plays. Uh, the only guy I was a little disappointed in was Keyshawn Vaughn. I thought, I thought Keyshawn was going to have a big ball game, and he stuttered a little bit. And uh, but that was his first big action too. And speaking of the the O line earlier, you said you were you thought there was some good pass protection in there. I know they they did give up three sacks. And before this game, uh, you guys were six and two with one or fewer sacks and had a losing record of two and three when there were two or more. So uh, why do you think this game was was different? Where you were able to come out with a better outcome despite those three sacks? And and what did that mean for the offensive line performance overall? Yeah, it was a little bit of both tight ends and offensive line, but. <clears throat> they they ran a couple blitzes where they got us and uh, we got picked and, and put ourselves in bad position. It was more technique than it was uh, mental error type thing, but uh, we fixed it at halftime and, and really didn't have a problem in the second half. And zero penalties for either team at halftime. Uh, you guys finished with just one on your end. How how happy were you with just the overall cleanness of the game for, for you guys? Yeah, we've been pretty – ever since Chicago, we've been a pretty disciplined football team as far as penalties. And, uh, you know, it, it was uh, the one – that was a big one, though, on the punt return. We lost 15 yards of field position, but uh, uh, pretty pretty solid. Really, I think our guys are disciplined now and, and, uh, and know how to play the game cleanly. And Tom Brady, 320 passing yards in the second half, most in a second half by a quarterback this season. New season high in passing yards in a game for him with 390. What did you think of his performance? Oh, he was outstanding. Um, he didn't miss anything. Uh, there were there were a couple where he got a little pressure that uh, pushed off his spot, but uh, overall he was he was spot on the entire ball game. All right. Well, we still have plenty more coming up here on the Bruce Arian Show, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back into the Bruce Arian show, talking about that win over the Falcons. Uh, Cam Brate, four catches, 54 yards. He had a long one of 18. Uh, how important was his role that he played in, and especially when some of those catches came? He was huge. I mean, Cam's been playing really, really well for us. And, uh, you know, more and more in the game plan each week, um, every time he gets his opportunity, he makes the best of it. And Antonio Brown finished with 93 yards and got his first touchdown catch as a Buccaneer. I feel like I heard maybe Tom Brady saying after the game that um, this particular touchdown catch was sort of the epitome of what this offense can be with what the defense was forced to choose between Antonio Brown and Mike Evans. Is, is that how you saw it? Well, there's no doubt they were both open and uh, it was a great, again, great protection Tom had all day and uh, threw a perfect ball to AB and he just ran right by the guy. I was really happy for him to get in the end zone. It's, uh, it's always important to get that first touchdown. Yeah, and what did work well in particular for Antonio Brown in that game? That is definitely, you know, between a touchdown and 93 yards. That's, that's pretty much his biggest game since getting here. Yeah, he's, he's been playing, he's making the best of all his opportunities. Uh, we got him across the field a few times in this one, and, uh, and that deep ball was, was special. Mike Evans, 110 yards, uh, had a 32-yard one, and also drew 28 penalty yards on just one play. Um, what worked well for him in, in that particular matchup, and, and just how much have you seen maybe some improvement on his chemistry with Brady in these recent games? Yeah, it's, it's growing and growing. You know, these guys tried to... to Play a lot, a lot of single high and leaving Mike alone with some safety help. But uh, Mike was just getting open and, and open. And uh, we could have hit him a couple more times. We got pressured uh, and Tom threw the ball away one time. But uh, Mike had a heck of a ball game. 
And how about uh, Chris Godwin and Scotty Miller? What were some of the additions that you saw from them? And I know in particular, I saw one pretty incredible block by Godwin on one of those mic catches, but what were some of the ways that you saw the two of those guys and uh, just contribute to the offense this game? Yeah, Chris Chris owns the middle of the field, and uh, we, we hit him on those screens and stuff. He's a tough tackle. I mean, I don't know if he – I don't think they ever tackled him on, on that one screen. But uh, he did such a great job of blocking coming down the stretch when we were running out the clock. And that's just Chris. I mean, he's an all-around great player. And switching over to the defensive side of things, uh, Falcons only had 37 yards rushing. I know that has to make you pretty happy. And, and overall, what, did, what really worked on the defensive side of trying to stop their run and eliminate that part of their game? Yeah, we knew we could stop the run against them. And uh, the thing we didn't do very well is, is handle the play action. You know, we were still biting on the run a little bit too much. And Matt Ryan had a heck of a ball game. I thought they had a good game plan. A lot of max protection, a lot of play action passes. And, uh, and Calvin Ridley is a heck of a player. And, uh, you know, Matt, Matt did a great job early in the ball game of finding him. All right, we still have more coming up here on the Bruce Arian Show, talking about this win over the Falcons and looking ahead to next week's game against Detroit. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Bruce Arians Show. Casey Phillips here with head coach Bruce Arians talking about the play of the defense against the Falcons in that win. I know third down had been something you guys had really been harping on with the defense trying to get off the field, especially earlier in the game. Overall, for the entirety of the game, how happy were you with the defensive play on third down? Yeah, not to our standard. You know, I think they were 60% or somewhere around 50%, which is way too high. And uh, some of it was missed tackles, two quarterback scrambles where we got out of our rush lanes. And we just got to be a little more disciplined and, and tackle a little bit better on third down. Huge, huge plays on, on and down the stretch on third down, though. I thought fourth quarter third down defense was outstanding. Yeah, Devin White had a, a pretty monster game, uh, even for him. 12 tackles, three sacks, four tackles for loss. Uh, which that was a new career high for him. And after the 1 p.m. games, he was third in the league with 130 tackles. So um, tell us a little bit about what you thought about his individual game and then what that says about the kind of season that he's having to be third in the league in tackles. Yeah, he's having a great year. And, uh, you know, he's matured into the defensive leader that we knew he would be. Um, got great pressure on the quarterback. You know, he's a heck of a blitzer. They were, they were trying to keep Max protecting, so the back was staying in, and he found some creases. And when he sees a crease, he's got great quickness and speed to hit it and got three sacks on, on Matt Ryan. Yeah, how have you seen his pass rush ability improve since last year and, and maybe just things in general that you've seen from him, the growth since his rookie year and, and what kind of a different player he is this year? Yeah, no doubt the growth. You know, you, you, it's one thing – to, to blitz, it's another thing to blitz tentatively. Uh, he does not blitz tentatively anymore. He's a force when he's coming, but he also knows when that back might be chipping and leaking out, and uh, that hurt him in the past. And uh, now he knows exactly when, when he can go, and uh, he's matured into one heck of a player. Yeah, I think tentative is not a word that we use for Devin in any situation anymore on or off the field. Um, how about our secondary overall? I know that uh, Calvin Ridley and Gage had some pretty big games, but what did you see from our secondary overall and then maybe even some guys having to step up because of some injuries? Yeah, they were putting a bind a little bit with those play action passes. Guys were getting down 18, 20 yards, hitting those deep curls on us. I thought in the second half we played really solid. Um, Sean Murphy Bunny. But it was one of his better ball games, even though he got beat one time on that on that touchdown. I thought he played well. Uh, was it, when Carlton went down, you know, Ross Cockrell came in and did a great job. Antoine Winfield had another great ball game. We had our hands on some passes. We need to catch those interceptions when we get our hands on them. Yeah, I mean, there were so many uh, pass breakups and balls batted down. I know that um, Carlton and Antoine both had big ones in the end zone. Uh, Jordan Whitehead and, and Devin had them on back-to-back -back plays. Sue batted one down at the line. Anthony Nelson batted one down at the line. What were some of the things that were working so well to get that? I know you want more of those to be interceptions, but uh, what was really what you saw about their ability to get their hands on so many of them? Yeah, I thought I thought Carlton should have been a clear interception. He made a great play in the end zone and uh, just didn't catch it. And uh, and then Jordan had had a great one in the in the flat and uh, one-handed just jumped up and batted it down instead of going up and intercepting it. But, uh, you know, we'll get our hands on those balls. Turnovers are huge in ball games like that, and they, they would have swung the game quicker. 
Yeah, and take us through the one that Antoine Winfield had in the end zone. I feel like that ended up, of course, especially knowing what the final score was being such a um, important play down the stretch. But um, tell us a little bit about what he was asked to do in that play and some of the maybe instincts and the physical and mental side of making that play for him. Yeah, he did a great job of reading Matt Ryan. And then Calvin Ridley went all the way across the field and uh, kind of beat him to the spot, got a hand on it, knocked it down. It was a great, great play, big play. And uh, Jamel Dean was back after missing some time with a concussion and groin injury. Seemed like a, a really solid uh, tackling day in particular for him. What did you see from from his play coming back from those injuries and after missing him for a bit, what he means to that secondary now? Yeah, really aggressive and, and played, I thought, one of his better ball games. And uh, good to see him back. We need him down the stretch. And with Calvin Ridley and Gage and, and their pretty big games that they had and knowing you guys are going to be facing them again in two weeks, what are the things that make the two of them so tough? And maybe what are some things that you learned uh, from going against each of them now this week? Well, again, both of them have great speed, uh, good hands, and they get down the field. And Matt Ryan's was still one of the best deep ball throwers in that 20, 25 yard range that there is in the league on those deep corner routes and, and deep stop routes. Um, we just have to do a better job of, of staying near them and, uh, and get a better pass rush, too. That would help. Um, and I know Hayden Hurst also added a touchdown. It was on some pretty tough coverage by Jordan Whitehead. What did you see that uh, worked on that play or didn't work and, and what led to that touchdown? Yeah, Jordan got beat inside and uh, he had good coverage. But uh, Hayden Hurst just such a big target. And Matt put a perfect ball away from Jordan, so he had no chance on it. But uh, stay inside and don't get, don't get beat inside. And then uh, finally, what was the, what went into the choice to have Tanner Hudson be active, Anthony Auclair inactive? Is it really more about maybe even what Joe Haig has been able to do in some of those jumbo packages? What were some of the decisions there of the ways that you've been using those guys this season? Yeah, HUD gives us a great receiver and, and more speed on special teams. Uh, Anthony struggled a little bit in his pass protection the week before. He's still, I think he's still, he's nursing that calf injury a little bit. And Joe Haig's done a great job as a tight end for us in a running game and pass protection. So it it's, gives us good flexibility until Anthony's totally healthy. All right, well, we still have one more segment coming up here on the Bruce Arian Show. We're going to dive into that next game coming up against Detroit. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back into the Bruce Arian Show. Looking ahead to this Detroit game, um, the interesting thing of playing a game on Saturday, it's a little bit different. You're maybe kind of used to the Thursday nights or the Monday nights, but Saturday is definitely a little bit more uh, unique. How does that change the schedule for the week and the way you guys prepare for that? Well, the big big change is we have to travel on Christmas, and uh, you hate traveling on Christmas. You like to have the guys spend all that day with their families, but uh, we're going to have to leave around you know six o'clock on, on Christmas Day, uh, which changes. A lot of things for us, but it's a shorter week. Um, hopefully, we can win the ball game, have a little bit of time after Christmas uh, with our families. And uh, but again, uh, Detroit Lions are uh, another team that uh, they can score a lot of points. Yeah, tell us a little bit about their offense and what all they bring. Matt Stafford, you got Amendola, Adrian Peterson. I mean, you got Sanu. There's just a million guys over there that you know can make plays. Uh, looking at what this offense looks like at this point in the season, what are some of the biggest things you know you're going to have to be aware of? Well, Matt, it all starts with Matt Stafford. I mean, uh, I always kid him. He's one of the few guys I'll go out and watch warm up. I just love watching him throw. He's just an, I've got an unbelievable arm. And... Uh, I've been a big fan of his for a long, long time. And, you know, he distributes the ball to everybody. They got a big young tight end, Hockenstein. They got everything that takes. Adrian Peters is one of my favorite players of all time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a huge challenge for us defensively. And how about the Lions defense? We know it has struggled at times during the season, but where can it still be dangerous? Even, you know, we know we, they don't have any uh, Jeff Okuda anymore due to him being out with surgery. But just overall, what does that defense still potentially bring? They, they, they're big and stout. They do a good job against the run, although Tennessee got them, and Tennessee gets everybody. Uh, but they're, they're a good, solid defensive football team and uh, really big in the middle. Jamie Collins is one of the best interior linebackers in the game. And uh, finally, with uh, the holiday traditions, I feel like that's something that normally with families, teams, there's a lot of stuff. Is, is COVID interrupting some of the things that you like to normally do, or how are you guys going to try to still make it special for the team and for your family? 
Yeah, we always try to get out of the out of the building quickly on Christmas Eve. You know, some team, my family, we, our, our name started with A, so Chris, Santa Claus came to us early. He always came Christmas Eve. My grandmother couldn't wait till Christmas morning. And the rest of the guys like a Christmas Day. So we'll, we'll have hopefully 27, 28 hours uh, off in between to uh, to have a lot of fun with our families. And uh, it is a very unique Christmas, and uh, I, I want to wish all the fans out there a happy holiday season. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Happy holidays to you and the rest of your family as well. And good luck against the Lions. You bet.